Anytime you're doing this, just make sure your bolt's out so nothing bad happens. Now, as you can see, we've got the Coldwell ballistic chronograph out there, and we've got the uh, magneto speed on the rifle. So, now I, I do have the app for uh, the Coldwell, and it's hooked up to my iPad, so I can I can be able to work with that. But I can't go out. I can't get that thing uh, off the range. I can't do anything with that until the entire range goes cold. However, with the magneto speed, everything is right here. My display box, the, the magneto speed itself, the cable, everything is right here on this bench. And that's the advantage. Uh, that's a major advantage to the uh, magneto speed over a standard one. Now I'm not knocking the standard one. It's a very good chronograph. It seems to be quite accurate and I really do like it. But we also have a problem with weather. Now I happen to be under uh, a, a little structure right here um, so all my stuff here is dry. However, if it was raining I can't, I can't set that up. I'd get water over the optic eyes. It wouldn't work. It would probably electronically fail through shorting out, things like that. So, but I do want to see uh, <clears throat> just how the two compare to each other as far as speeds. Now, my expectation is is that the magneto speed is going to pick up a slightly faster speed than the chronograph out there. Now, granted, I'm only about uh, 10 feet out, but you still have gravity and you still have uh, the, the resistance of the atmosphere. So, in theory, I should have a slightly lower average. And it might only be, you know, a couple feet per second, but it should show that. It'll be weird if it doesn't, but <clears throat> I'm not necessarily sighted at anything out there. There's a couple rocks out of the 200-yard mark. I'm just going to sight in on those and uh, run a string of shots, and then we'll go back to the house and do kind of a follow-up on what we think. We'll show you some of the ballistic data that we gathered. So in the meantime, I'm going to reset all, all my stuff because I still have some saved data in here. So I'll get all that done and we'll run some shots. So that's reading 2997, and here I've got 3002, so very, very close, very close, but the theory is correct. That is slower out there than it is here, and both of these recognize that. Let's try it again. Twenty-nine ninety-four out there. Three thousand and three at the muzzle. So again, two shots consecutive, and we're getting that very very minor deviation between the two, but it is correct. Let's take a look at this. There's 29.97, and before you walk out, you make sure that it, this is safe here. And out here, we're at 29.91. We'll get the math done when we get back home, just to see what that uh, 
what that typical deviation there is between the two chronographs, but so far um, they're extremely close to each other and uh, they're, you know, they're proving to be correct in their measurements so far. Let's take a few more shots. About five feet per second difference. It seems to be kind of the average there. Now, if we assume the range was hot right now, <clears throat> there's nobody else out here. I got kind of lucky this morning, but uh, if we were to assume the range was hot, I could not get out there and get that thing until everybody else decided it was time to go cold. However, I can easily and safely be done with my chronograph just that simple so now if I've got that one take your bolt out I have to go get it let's just assume the range is cold but maybe we were waiting for 20 or 30 minutes and that has happened uh, as many of you shooters know if you ever go to a range get a lot of people out here shooting that's that can be a problem and also the weather Now that last shot that I took, I had that case in the barrel for a while. Um, now we've thrown some shots here, so the barrel's definitely getting heated up. My average out of my rifle is usually right at or just under 3,000 feet per second. Here, I'm at uh, 3,046, and I was at 3,051 on my uh, on my magneto speed so for those of you who don't know that is very true and I know we're kind of getting off subject here but the hotter you get that temperature of the of the chamber and the longer you leave your cartridge in there the higher the pressure is going to be the faster the bullets gonna go usually um, I try to get a chambered round and a shot off within about five seconds uh, sometimes ten but if I let it sit in there, sit in there for 30 seconds or a minute or two minutes I'm gonna get a massive difference in my speed and so just something to keep in mind when you're when you're out testing and, and doing this load development now normally I'd be out here and I'd I'd let this cool you know I've got about six or so shots through it so I'd let it cool down for for quite a while 10 minutes or so try to get that temperature back down and then I'd lay some more shots because I want to make sure that the the speed that I'm picking up no matter what system I'm using here is is concise as as accurate as I can possibly make it, and of course you want to do things like uh, uh, test your temperature of your chamber and your barrel and things like that. We'll get into that in another video, but but this was just to show you um, that that these both of these systems work work very well. One just has a better advantage over the other simply because of the location of where you're shooting if you're at a range or potentially the weather conditions outside. So. We're in Western Washington here, and this year has been just—it's been just terrible. The rain—I've never seen anything like it. Um, but uh, so it's been really hard to get out and shoot and and, and do some load development. Uh, well, not necessarily. It's been hard to do it with this. I have been able to do it with the other with the magneto speed. So, anyways, just—I uh, guess that kind of wraps that up. But now, I do have something else to show you. So let me get this up on the bench, and we'll take a look. Okay, one last quick thing about the comparison between the two chronographs, the Magneto Speed and this particular one here is a Caldwell, is look at the size difference. I can put this in my backpack or I can carry that by itself because it's not going in my backpack. So I can take these, both of these, out in the field, but which one's going to be more convenient for me? So, you know, you might be out, uh, I, we're down at sea level here, might be out uh, zeroing in down here, but uh, we go down to Utah to hunt, and we're up at 9,500 feet, 10,000 feet. Might want to verify the speed of my bullets before I start a hunt, and which is going to be easier to pack around. 
I think that's pretty obvious. Okay, so we're back from the range and uh, we're kind of done with the uh, test here on the Magneto Speed. Uh, this is the Sporter model. Um, I've, I've used the other model, I believe it's called the V3, um, and, and they're, they're very nice too. Um, you get a little bit more uh, friendly uh, usability with the, uh, with the display readout. It's just a little bit nicer. Um, they both work great. Uh, incredibly accurate. Um, these are a little bit more money than your standard chronograph, but uh, you know when you look at the advantages of just being able to go out to your shooting range, to your the, the canyons you shoot or wherever you shoot, and being able to just go out and, and, and run this thing uh, without having to worry about uh, you know a bunch of rain uh, getting in the optic eyes and things like that. Um, this is pretty cool, um, especially you know for just a, a you know fifty bucks more or whatever it is. It's it's really I think it's worth it. it it's worth it for me. It may not be worth it for you, but uh, I suspect if you if you did buy one of these and really started using it. I bet you that you would, I, I, I think you'd be sold, I really do. Um, so I've had this thing now for just about a year, a uh, little over, well actually probably just over a year, and it's been spot on every single time I've used it. I've never had a problem with it. The app is quite, uh, it's very user friendly, I don't have a problem with the app. The app for some reason gets some bad reviews, but I don't know, I've not had a problem with it, but who knows, maybe it's a... Uh, Maybe it's a phone link issue or something weird. So, anyways, uh, the average difference between the two was a, uh, between four and six feet per second, um, which would make sense uh, in a in a ten foot uh, space there uh, between the two chronographs. So, uh, which which is kind of what I expected. I've actually done this before, so I kind of kind of knew what to expect. Um, but uh, I, I had not done this as much as I did it today, and it was extremely consistent. I never ever had one that was, uh, you know, I, I never got 20 feet or 30 feet per second difference. It was between four, five, and six feet per second difference between the two chronographs. So anyways, hey, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up, share it, and uh, subscribe. We have a lot more coming your way. Um, a lot more. Uh, in fact, we're, we're going to take a look at some tracked optics here uh, this weekend. So uh, stay tuned, folks, and thanks for watching.